We often think that Mercedes is meant for the kind of person that wants to waft along the road in complete isolation from the external world in a bubble of luxury. Or in simpler words, usually Mercs are meant for old folks. However, I have been driving this Mercedes-Benz GLC 300 4MATIC and as you can see, I have been thoroughly driving it in the monsoon. It is not really a boomer machine. What it is, in fact, is an epic road trip car. And that's why today I'm going to be taking it to see the sunrise with my mates through the night because, let me tell you, this car shines at night. Our plan of action is to go and see the sunrise at Madhe Ghat. It's currently 2 a.m. and the sun is set to rise at 6.50 in the morning. So we've got ample time to enjoy the car and explore all its features. So it is no secret that the Mercedes-Benz GLC is a hot selling bit of kit for Mercedes globally. In its segment, it is the best-selling car globally and in India as well. Even though it costs a little bit of a premium compared to its competition like the BMW X3 or uh, the Q5, the Mercedes does sell quite a fair bit more and it is mostly preferred by the elder gentlemen. However, I really think that this is a fantastic road trip machine that can do quite a lot for the young guy too because let me tell you this has an amazing sound system it's a very comfortable car it has crazy lighting and it has all the tech that any young man would love so today the mission is to take this on a nice night adventure drive it along some difficult roads and see what it's actually like After driving along the city roads for some time, we soon touched the ghats and the road conditions started to deteriorate quickly. But nothing to worry about since the GLC has an off-road feature. So as you've just seen, we have just crossed a bit of a rough patch and I got to test the off-road mode which um, in my opinion is actually quite cool. The suspension starts getting a little bit uh, more compliant even when you are at pace. And the selective damping allows you to uh, raise the height of the car by 20 mm in off-road mode plus the off-road instrument cluster looks fantastic. And now since we are going to be trying to chase and find a place to see the sunrise, I have a very nice compass right in front of me to know where is due east. So yes, we are 47 minutes away from the location that I have chosen and uh, we are maybe two hours away from from dawn and yeah we might have uh, we might get the blue balls of the century because it is raining it is raining right now and if it continues raining in two hours we might not get to see the sun yay us <laughs> Closing in on our destination and because I uh, got a little bit of paranoia that I won't be able to reach on time before the sunrise, I was a little bit brisk on my driving but at least I got to know that this car is actually pretty good when it comes to dynamics. So I thought that the Merc would be pretty lazy in the corners but I'm happy to report this is no slouch and I can tell you that thanks to its selective damping system it also is pretty good in the corners so its passive damping control allows you to uh, have level control so you are going to be able to take corners pretty flat and depending on what setting you are in 
the dampers will be sprung for uh, that kind of driving. So if you're in com in comfort, there is quite a lot of roll and uh, it is still compliant and enjoyable, but uh, you can feel it. But put the thing in sport and yeah, the steering wheel stiffens up a little bit. The suspension gets a little bit more taut. And yeah, of course in off-road mode, it also turns a little bit softer and it also goes up by 20 mm. So it's a pretty versatile car and it performs pretty well whatever you throw at it. So I'm pretty impressed with the car and if we're actually early, I wouldn't mind it because at least I had fun in the guards. The GLC's engine took me a bit by surprise, boasting a 2-litre four-cylinder petrol powerhouse producing 258 horsepower and 400 newton meters of torque. Shared with other Mercedes models like the E-Class, GLE and CLE, this M254 engine is paired with a 48-volt mild hybrid system and a conventional 12-volt electrical system. This mild hybrid setup provides an additional 17 kilowatts or 200 newton meters of torque when needed, ensuring seamless acceleration. What impressed me the most, however, was the remarkable fuel economy. Despite city driving, we achieved a consistent 9 to 10 kilometers per liter average. Thanks to the mild hybrid technology, power delivery is linear, making for a relaxed drive. But don't underestimate its potency. The 258 horses propels you to triple digits effortlessly. The 9G Tronic 9-speed torque converter gearbox is equally impressive, offering smooth shifts and paddle shifters for added sportiness. Overall, the GLC 300 4Matic's engine strikes a perfect balance catering to both comfort-seeking elders and thrill-seeking youngsters. Its blend of refinement, power and efficiency makes for a pretty engaging drive. We finally arrived at our spot and parked facing east with the sky just starting to lighten. Now that I had some time left before the sunrise, I thought it would be the perfect moment to dive into one of the GLC's standout features, the interior. This is without a doubt one of the top reasons to consider the GLC. The interior of the GLC is nothing less than first class. You can only get this avant-garde trim in India, but abroad you can also get an AMG line trim, which is a little bit more sporty. This is the luxurious variant and it definitely shows it with this open pore wooden trim all along the dashboard with aluminium colored lines. Looks really fancy. Moving on to the center console, you have this carbon fiber type finish but it's not really carbon fiber it still looks really really classy and inside you get a massive cubby hole with two cup holders a wireless charger and two type c chargers moving on towards the back you have an another cubby hole in the center console with two type c chargers and quite a lot of space you can opt for three leather trims in the avant-garde uh, variant in india with uh, this macchiato beige color. You can also opt for a sienna brown color or a normal black interior. I really like this macchiato beige, but I would prefer a black interior because I think it would look really nice with the open pore wood. When it comes to tech, you get this massive center touch screen that controls pretty much every function inside the car, which is also a problem because you have to use it to do any form of thing inside the car and you also have this now electronically adjustable three-spoke steering wheel with the infamous uh, capacitive touchscreen control buttons on the side of the steering wheel which are very fidgety and are kind of difficult to just work with smoothly and uh, you also get now paddle shifters there are a couple more problems that I think should be mentioned the seat controls are a little unintuitive to the touch which make you struggle a little bit to adjust your seat and uh, I might be nitpicking right now but it's a 75.9 lakh rupee car X showroom I think I am allowed to nitpick The GLC's minor drawbacks fade into insignificance beside its exceptional overall experience This luxury SUV transforms into a private club at your whim 
courtesy of its breathtaking Burmester sound system and dazzling ambient lighting. Interior design a flawless 10 on 10. As dawn broke, we reluctantly left the GLC's opulent confines to witness a majestic sunrise unfolding before us. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. As you can see, we have accomplished our mission. While the sun didn't give us a direct look out of the mountain, it still gave us enough daylight to witness the absolute mesmerizing beauty that we are around. And now that we've got light, let's talk about the design of the GLC. This updated GLC has a new grille and a new bumper, which is part of the avant-garde trim. If you're abroad and you get the AMG line, you get a sportier front end. Moving on towards the side, you get a set of 19-inch uh, twin-spoke alloys and if you go for the AMG line abroad, you will get 20-inch AMG line wheels, which in my opinion look nicer. Moving on further back, you have this running board sidestep, which seems a little useless, uh, considering that the car's ground clearance is 150 mm, but it is actually very easy for elder people to enter the back uh, seats. Moving on towards the rear, you get a new set of tail lights and uh, in between the tail lights, it looks like a light bar, but it really isn't. However, it still looks nice and in place. And if you want, you can opt for a rear sportier wing at the back that looks pretty nice too. Overall, I have been very happy driving the GLC 300 and considering that I have driven the X3 as well, I really think that this makes much more sense for the price that it brings. And yes, this is the more expensive variant. This is the only version you can get in petrol and it is 75.9 lakhs X showroom. All in all, I have really loved my drive today and I have thoroughly enjoyed my couple of days with the GLC 300. And if you're looking for something that looks like a statement, this definitely makes it. Do let us know your thoughts on the GLC 300 formatic and would you pick it over its competition. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed already, please hit that subscribe button because content is only going to get better on TDH. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Shubh Dipavali.